this semester. Uh, actually, uh, they asked me to start this uh, session tonight, and it's my pleasure to uh, introduce this project, which is the assessment uh, gourmet system or uh, platform to the university. We've been working actually to uh, establish uh, or assure the quality of the e-exams in the university. So tonight we start uh, the, uh, like a series of workshops about uh, how to use this uh, platform effectively. Uh, so I like please everyone to transfer your knowledge you take tonight to your colleagues and the colleges. And uh, that's the job I uh, like ask you is ask every one of you uh, kindly to transfer the experience tonight uh, to everyone. And uh, you will have uh, the link for the evaluation and measurement center that you will have, will have all the content of the workshops and videos uh, and explanations of how you to use the platform. So on behalf of the center and the company's team, we welcome every one of you and we will begin right now for the workshops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You, can, you can start. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we welcome you all. Dr. Walid, you can start. Okay. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. I hope you all uh, uh, happy and pleasant night. Hopefully with a lot of uh, things new for you. Uh, so as Dr. Said said, we, this is the first uh, workshop in English. We already have gone, given the, the same workshops uh, in Arabic. So this is for our English uh, speaking. It's about assessment gourmet uh, today. So let's start. Uh, before we start, meaning maybe give some information that this project actually has started like more, like almost one year before uh, uh, ago. Uh, and it actually, uh, I am I'm aware that some of uh, the attendees, participants actually has attended some of these sessions, maybe most of it before uh, in the, the last semester. So today we are uh, in the second phase of the project that we are starting uh, the implementation. The last phase was piloting. We are piloting the material, trying to get more information from the faculty making the integration between the system and the uh, university uh, admission and enrollment system. So now we are in the stage that we, you are uh, our TUT who are going to be trained to train the other colleges. And uh, that's why let's tell you about the training program. The training program actually is, is split into two parts. The first part is remote training workshops which we have today one session and tomorrow another session. It's just an introduction and a brief explanation of the steps of using the system. So it's like a global approach. We will start giving you the whole view, the whole image of the whole system and it may, most of its features quickly will go uh, together through all its parts, giving you an introduction and, feed, and uh, the, the complete image of the system. So you are aware of all the features and how it works, what's the workflow of it, how you can use it, what's different between it and Blackboard. Then you will have another sessions, intensive training, which will be given in the colleges, face-to-face -face sessions, where our engineers will go and visit your college uh, and give you a number of workshops, explaining every detail, all the details, taking you gradually step-by-step step, till you are ready to train the other faculty in your colleges. So this is very important because I, will, I, am, I know you are going to face some challenges that we are going quickly through a lot of topics in each session, but 
we don't expect from you by the end of the session that you will be mastering the, the, what you have seen. It's just we are giving you the whole idea, the complete image, so you are aware of all the systems. Then we will go deep on the face-to-face -face sessions for the detailed uh, features and uh, taking you hands-on training step-by-step uh, step till you are ready to train, uh, use and use the system and train your colleagues. Uh, just uh, an announcement, questions and answers will be at the end. Uh, so we will, we will not uh, get any questions. However, you can write your questions on the chat. At the end of the session, we are going to answer all your questions, inshallah. Uh, I know that, uh, as I mentioned before, that some of the participants actually has attended this session before. So they will be aware of some of the features and maybe some of them ha have already uh, used the system in testing their uh, students. So please uh, be patient with us because we have some of the uh, participants, it's the first time for them to see the system. Uh, the last thing actually before we start about our objective today is that, of course, you know, this is training and technical training. So we will not going to discuss any general policies of university, of college, of learning, of the department. So we are just focusing on the system we have in our hands. Uh, so let's know first what are expected to be uh, presented today. Uh, first, we will give you an introduction about the platform, what are, what are, its, uh, what are its components, uh, what are the main features of the uh, platform. Then we'll go. We'll move to the platform to uh, give you. We we'll start with how to create an assessment plan. All of you actually has access now to the system, by the way, because it's already integrated with uh, an admission and enrollment system. So by default, the courses that has assigned to you at Blackboard and by university, whenever you will log in now to the, the system, you will find all the courses are there. But however, you need to manage this course. You need to enter the course, uh, log into your course and to start to create an assessment plan, uh, which actually explains what are the assessments you are going to uh, give to your students in this course and how much each assessment will uh, present on the overall uh, score of the course and how you're going to, uh, how you are planning to do this assessment. Are you going to do it a paper-based test, a quiz, an alternative assessment, or uh, even an online uh, test, you may test on at home, you may test at the lab, it differs. So this is how you plan for the assessment. Then we will go to the item bank, which is a separate module, for, so you can develop your own uh, bank. And here let's, it's very important, very important to explain that what's the difference between a course and an item bank. A course is a temporary thing. Each time a course is assigned to you by the college or the department, but an item bank is a diff totally different. It's something, it's a tool that you will use to develop your items, questions, and keep and reuse for many times and for many years. So from the same bank, you can publish two tests, each test for different course or different type of students. You can use it this semester, the next semester, after five years, you even can transfer or share the, the questions with other of your colleagues or the department. We will know about this more, inshallah. Um, also today, we'll have a look how to write the, the uh, questions on the item bank. I mean the items or questions when I use items, just if it's yani, not really uh, common for some of you. Uh, items is, uh, we say item bank and also we say question bank. And sometimes we say items or questions, so uh, uh, both terminology are equivalent. Uh, so we're going to give you some uh, how you can write items. We're not going to handle all type of items this uh, this night. Uh, however, when you go to face to face uh, meeting uh, training, you will be able to uh, use uh, and to use all the types of items available on the system. Uh, and as Dr. Saeed mentioned, that the system is really has a lot of features. So by all means, you will find a lot of videos, small, short videos that will explain to you in English uh, what to do in each uh, part. And even within the platform, there's a help and support we will also introduce to you. And the last thing we're going to discuss today is how to create a test manually. We hope that we will have enough time to create also a test automatically because this will release us from some time for tomorrow. Tomorrow, which will be the second session, we will have 
session four, uh, how to uh, run a paper-based exam and how to run a computer-based exam. So let's start. First, let's know what is Assessment Gourmet. Assessment Gourmet is a, a comprehensive testing and assessment platform. Why comprehensive? Because it includes actually all the process, processes of the assessment and test testing for uh, any university. So it's not just running a test or giving a test. It's not only for computer-based. It's computer-based, it's uh, paper-based, it's even for alternative assessment. I mean that you can give you one of your students one project or even a research paper he can do and uh, upload on the system. <clears throat> so it's really uh, concerned with all types of assessments. Uh, it has a, a lot of modules. That's why each module will handle a specific type of uh, uh, the process. And it will tries to automate all the testing processes in one solution with high, achieving high level of security and support and development of uh, e-paper, e-exams and paper. Uh, and formal and standardized exams. Of course, because it's a huge uh, platform, it has been already aligned with different international standards. For example, it's aligned with the standards for educational and psychological testing, which is actually the standards, international standards for all in standardized exams. Uh, it also ha has been aligned with International Test Commission and even for the uh, Association of Test Publishers guidelines for computer-based testing. So it's internationally aligned with international standards. Let's go directly to the main features. This is some sample of the main features or, or core features of the system. Uh, using it, you can develop item banks for your courses. Uh, also, there are questions remotely by even subject matter. So you can develop your questions or even assign some of your assistants or colleagues to write items as well and review it. Uh, using it, you can assemble a test automatically using a blueprint. Uh, and we will explain what does it mean a blueprint. Most of course, you know about it, but yeah, it has a specific definition with the system. Uh, yeah, of course, it will help you to re reduce the chances of cheating, especially in like, uh, e-tests and even on paper tests by giving a, a lot of options and the ability of having equivalent and equated test forms and versions. It help you uh, manage the course assessment plan and generate the students' results for each course. Even the course uh, file can easily be supported by a lot of reports, uh, statistical reports and technical reports, no need to go back and do it manually. Even uh, the Dr. Saeed, the, measurement, the Center of Evaluation Measurement, the higher management level of the university, they have access as well to some of the results and uh, uh, reports, so they will be able to, uh, able to know how the system, uh, how the assessment is working for each program. Uh, of course, it can it help you standardize uh, your uh, scoring for AC questions, especially if you are using objective, uh, uh, subjective uh, questions. It also helps you, as we said, uh, having a lot of technical reports. So this is the main features. Generally, there is uh, because it's a huge system, it's a platform, it's not like a software, it has different components. Uh, so you have an administration component, which is mainly for the IT. Uh, like uh, uh, integration with other system, introducing users, uh, creating accounts for students and so on. It has also an item banking module where you by default will have access once you log in. So you can create unlimited number of item banks. It has a module for scheduling uh, for the test and even uh, reservation for students. It has a module for online tests and proctoring. So uh, either it's remotely so they, that the student can take the test at home or they can take it at a lab within the college itself. It also supports uh, where I manage and supports the paper-based exam. So using the system, you can generate paper-based exams, you can uh, score it, you can get the results, you can print the uh, question booklets. Uh, a lot of features actually are, it's, so it's not only computer-based exams. It helps uh, what we call on-screen marking. So you even you can, if you have uh, open-ended questions, essay questions, you can score it on the screen. So it shows, Will display for you the students answers and give you the rubric so you can score the items it has a student portal so students has a portal they can access the system it has also data management and analysis module and finally um, a management uh, module for labs and how to utilize the labs computer labs and uh, testing rooms or uh, classrooms in the university 
Uh, as you already may notice that the system actually uh, handles four types of exams. The first type is actually on-campus e-test. So where you can have an online computer-based test and you run it within the university, either on a computer, a lab, computer lab, I mean, and PCs or even uh, laptops or even uh, tablets. At the same time, you can have at, at home e-test. So you can test the students at home using their own devices. Uh, it also supports the paper-based test classic. We call it classic because simply I will create my question assembly test. I will print the, the question uh, booklet and I will just give it to my students and they will answer on a sheet of paper and then I will collect score. I will upload just the scores for the, the system and it will handle the results and will compute and verify even the quality of the questions. This is what we call it classic paper-based test. There's another mode which actually is a paper OMR. OMR means simply using the bubbling sheet. The, you know, of course, maybe I'm sure that you are aware of this. There's a bubbling sheet. Usually it's a red uh, sheet where you have bubbles and students can answer uh, the questions by chaining. And then you put it on the scanner. Once you put it on the scanner, you can export this in Excel sheet. So you can even upload the Excel sheet and then it will continue working and giving uh, giving the final score to students, even it will uh, help you identify the quality of your questions. So this is the three or four passes of testing types in the plan system. Then it comes a big question. What's the difference between Blackboard and assessment government? The university already have Blackboard and a lot of many universities are using Blackboard. What's the difference? Okay, let's agree first. Both systems provide online e-tests. So both of them actually have a common feature, which is online e-tests. However, Blackboard is a learning management system. So the focus of Blackboard is mainly learning. It does everything that will support the learning. That's why it's more focused on formative assessment on classroom tests that are part of the learning process and that can mainly conduct it remotely. Okay, what about assessment gourmet? Assessment gourmet is somehow similar but different why it's an assessment management system so we have two types of systems learning and assessment both of them manage this uh, uh, process so what is assessment management system it focuses more on summative and official exams that assess the student's performance so it's not for learning it's for assessing the students it's more summative it's more official it works with more tests that require more security and more accuracy. That's, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the big difference. This, uh, also, assessment gourmet manages paper-based tests. Blackboard doesn't support really the, the, the paper-based uh, tests uh, using the OMR. Finally, the test can be conducted in computer labs, in classrooms, or from home. So Blackboard will support it that you will just run it from uh, remote computers or uh, tablets. So this is the main difference. And I can tell you that actually uh, Assessment Gourmet is actually a partner from, for Blackboard and Blackboard actually now currently is selling the Blackboard and Assessment Gourmet to many universities. And even Assessment Gourmet now sells uh, Assessment Gourmet and Blackboard to other universities. So it's now like two black, big platforms that are working together. Uh, and maybe one example is actually Cairo University in Egypt. Uh, you can, if you just uh, search it online, you will find that this is their own, this, uh, they call it smart system, smart campus system. It's actually com uh, uh, contains, uh, consists of Blackboard and assessment government. Okay, now let's go and focus more on what are the roles and responsibilities of the system. Okay. There is two main roles. Actually, there's a, a lot of roles, but what is mostly important for you to know that there's a course owner and a bank owner. I know maybe it's new for you to have to know what, what's the course owner. Yeah, this is a different terminology and we intended to use this terminology, not the professor or instructor or whatever, or even coordinator for the course because it's need to be clear. What's a course owner? I'm a faculty, I'm teaching a course, I'm responsible for the test. So I'm, I'm the course owner of this uh, course. 
And the main uh, uh, role of this and responsibility of the course owner is to define the course assessment plan, as we already discussed before, to book the exam, to schedule the test, uh, which is going to be happen, to, to, to set the delivery configuration, especially for the computer-based exams, manage the administration. It's not just more, uh, proctoring the test, it's managing it. You may have proctors that were going to help you or even some assistance, but it's that you are controlling the whole process. And then scoring, uh, if there is an open-ended, so you score or even assign the scoring to some of your assistants, if you already ha have some, and finally issuing the results. So you are responsible. This is the course owner. Nevertheless, you are the course uh, uh, coordinator. If you are not, this is different terminology. It's just for the system. And of course, sometimes there's some courses there are like three or four faculty or maybe two teaching the same course. Uh, but still, there is one who is the primary uh, instructor of the course. He will be the course owner. The other faculty, faculty will maybe uh, uh, considered as co-owner or assistant co-owner. But so this is uh, generally speaking. Uh, on the back, also there's another role, which by default, all of you, because he is an instructor uh, in the university, by default, once he log into the system, he will be uh, he will be able to be a bank owner. So he himself can create banks, unlimited number of banks. What's the, the responsibility of this? You can create the item banks, you can write items, you can create tests manually, automatically. You can publish the test. What does it mean publish? Publish is actually the link between the item bank and the course. When you publish a test from item bank, you send this test to a course, which you are already teaching. So you send it there, so it start. Item bank is a complete secure place where you have your all treasure of items. But this course is somehow different. So you only transfer a sample number of questions in a form of a test and you send it to a, a course to be administered there. And you also manage this. So you are not exposing all your item bank to anyone. Uh, the last thing actually is to manage item bank user privilege, which is very important. So the bank owner, actually he's, a, he's a system administrator for his banks. And we're going to talk about this more now which is security procedures in the system. First, a bank owner, which is a, the person who created the bank, or he has the ownership of the bank, he's the only person who can, who have access to the item bank. So when I create a bank, it's only me can see the question. No one else can do it. Unless I define and give access to other users from my colleagues. So it's only me can give access to others and I can even define what are the privilege, what are, what they can see, what they can do on my item bank. And we will see this uh, in the platform. Second, uh, by the way, even the item, bank, even the test, when, if, if this, suppose that I and uh, two of my colleagues, we are handling one item bank of the department. Now it's my term. I creating now a test for my course. Again, it's only me. The item bank has 5,000 questions, for example, for the department. I'm only the one person, I created now a test from this item bank. It's only me who can see this test. My colleagues cannot see the test. I cannot know which items I selected for the exam. So uh, unless I give them the privilege to see what I already created. Uh, in general, let's yeah, this is specifically for the item bank. So even the system administrator as the IT department on the university will not have access. Uh, no one will have access unless you give him access to your item mix. The platform, in general, all questions are encrypted. All communication between you, when you all log into the system, everything is already encrypted and secured. So that sometimes it may take some time to open the platform. Uh, if you didn't do any action on the system for a number of minutes, it will automatically uh, close uh, the system because it's already this is like the rules of, of the secure channels and it's controlled by uh, uh, King Khalid University because everything is stored on the university servers and under their control in terms of the security rules I mean because this is generally uh, what we call security procedures okay this is another point which which what is the workflow the workflow this is the normal workflow that we will have five steps. The first step, which actually is the item bank. 
why is IT Mac is the first step? Because simply it's it's not limited to one semester or one term. It's something which I create today and will be able to use for many years. And even 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 if I left, I can transfer the ownership to uh, to the department and so on. And some departments may decide that the, the IT bank will be the ownership by the department. So the head of the department will have will be the owner, and then he will give a privilege access to different uh, uh, faculty in the department. Then it starts actually the, the actual work, which is test planning. So as a course owner, I define the assessment plan, I do the configuration, I run, I uh, uh, I plan for do the scheduling, I decide who is going to be tested, which type of the test, like it's computer based or paper based, everything. I define all this, and then we go to the second or third actually point, which is actually I proctor or even manage the test session. So it's I manage the session, I can do it. It's a random session, is it computer based or even uh, paper based? Then after that, the fourth point, if there is open-ended questions, then I need to score this manually. If there is no uh, open-ended question, all questions are objective, then automatically it will work, go to uh, the final uh, step, which is uh, results. So the course owner will be able to export the results and even the students and statistics for the course in general. So this is a workflow. Item bank, it's yeah, a, a separate uh, process. You plan, you manage the, the course, you then manage the session, the test session, you score if it's required, and then you reduce the results. Okay, uh, it's very important because uh, yeah, because generally the, all the faculty are going to use the system, and maybe it's very important to mention, which I think Dr. Said already mentioned at the beginning, that now King Khalid University decided that this system will be the official system for assessment on the university. So you will be expected after a few months that you all the score the scores of your students on all the assessments and even the final score should and grade should be from assessment gourmet, not blackboard. So that's why a lot of uh, training materials has been developed and will also continue to develop for you as a trainers for even all faculty to use in the future. So. Uh, we are giving training. What we have here, I cannot tell that it's fair. Yeah, it's not hand, hands-on training, but just a general uh, training. And then you will have face-to-face -face, uh, training. There's technical support that you can access through the platform, and I will show it to you, which have a lot of uh, materials as well. And even you can send a message for the team uh, to uh, help you. There's also a lot of uh, resources. One of them actually is that you will have uh, infographics. You will have short videos explaining the steps. How, for example, how can I log in to the uh, assessment gourmet? How to create MCQ questions? You will find these uh, videos on the, uh, uh, the center uh, uh, channel on YouTube. So you will be able to access this and know, uh, know step by step how you can do it. Also, the help, there is a help website that can you access from the platform that will give you instructions and screenshots with the steps how to do every point. Okay, now uh, how to look into the platform. This is the URL for platform. It's exam.kku.edu.sa. So it's just in the word exam dot before the domain of the university. Okay, how can I log in? I know that some of you who has been working with us before they used to click on login and they, then you, they have to write you their username and password and we already have given them username and password. Now, no, that was a manual stage. Now everything is integrated. So you need to use a single sign on of the university. So now when you open this uh, uh, URL, you need to click on the key. You find here on the right side, a key, small key. Just to click, on the, uh, the key, once you click in, it will open for you click, uh, the university uh, single sign on page. Then you will just type your username and password, the university, the normal university username and password. Once you enter the username and password, you will be able to log into the system. Similarly, the students, they will be, we also uh, can log in also in the same way. Okay, so uh, now, as you can see that we already gone through quickly about uh, the system. We know what's the plan for training, what's the system, what's the difference between the system and the blackboard, what are the main roles, 
how we can log in, okay? I expect that you are going to log in now and maybe try, this is fine, but I prefer that you focus more on the next steps when we open the platform so you have a good idea, a complete idea about the platform and the features, okay? Now, let me give the, the theater for my colleague, uh, engineer Ibrahim to, to show you how to log into the system and to how to manage uh, your course, how to log into your course and start to create the assessment plan. Thank you, Dr. Olid. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Hope everything is okay. Uh, I will start sharing my screen. Okay, let's start and see how are we going to log in using this K uh, button. I will just click on this K button it will redirect me to the single sign-on page, the login of the university. I will just insert my username and password that I used to log in to the university website, and it will redirect me again to Assessment Gourmet. So I will just insert the username and password of my uh, university account, and I will just click login to go to Assessment Gourmet. So I will go back just to log into my, my user. I don't have university user, so I will log in with my user on assessment group. So before going to bank user, let's start and see how are we going to manage our course. So now I am a course owner. If we see here, this is the course owner or this is the rule that I am logging uh, in with. Uh, maybe I, as a user, I, I may have more than one rule. For example, if we see in the left uh, uh, panel, I can see that I have a role bank user, proctor, system administrator. I have multiple roles. Which one of them I want to be my default role? I can select one of those. For example, I can select the bank user to be my default role. So whenever, anytime, in the next time when I log into Assessment Gourmet, it will redirect me directly to bank user role. So I don't have to change my role to go to bank user. So now I selected the default role to be bank user. So I will log in directly to bank user every time. Now I am on a course owner role. If I want to change my role anytime, I can click on the profile here, then click on customize. Customize will open a list of all the roles that I, I assigned to me. I'll click on customize. Now I can see that I am logged in with a course owner. I can change it. Just click on the course owner role and I can select any of those roles. For example, I will go to bank user and click done. Here, I changed my role without logging out, then logging in again. And I want to go back to course owner role. I will just click again, customize and select course owner. If there are more than one academic year, I should select the active academic year or the year that I want to work on. So I will select this academic year. Then I have to select my course. Maybe I have more than one course. So I will select the course that I want to work on. Now I have two courses, demo course one, demo course two. I'll select demo course two and click done. Now I can start managing my course, demo course two to make sure that I am on the correct course. Here is the name of the course that I am working on now. In first term, demo course two on this academic year and as a course owner. And this will be the code of my faculty. Okay, I will start to go to administration. Here in administration, we can assign assistance. What will the assistant do? Anything I can, for example, I will just click on assign user. I can assign an assistant to help me in creating, for example, scheduling. To create scheduling for the students, I can simply select the user. For example, for example, I will select Dr. Walid. Then I will select or assign the rule to be scheduler. This rule will allow Dr. Walid only to create scheduling on my course, nothing else. Dr. Walid can't access the scores, can't access the uh, test forms or anything of my test configurations, just schedule tests for students and click save. 
course multiple of rules and it can be changed and we can add more rules as we need for example reader and co-owner which will have the same as my rules on the course okay so this is how we can assign assistance on our courses let's go to assessment plan in this page we can manage our assessment plan our assessment plan contains multiple assessments with different types i can create for example a midterm a test a, in paper based a test and a final as a computer based test i can create two quizzes for the students and even i can add a, an alternative test with, which we will see now so let's start by creating assessment but before creating assessment let's see this dashboard in this dashboard i can manage my course first here i can i, I can see that my course is still active, it's not submitted yet, so it's still active and I can work on it. Here I can add the academic grades. Let's click on edit. I can edit and modify my academic grades. For example, here I added that uh, the students uh, who will get, uh, get from zero to less than 50 will be failed in the course, will get the benchmark failed. From 50 to 65 will be fair, from 65 to 75 will be good and so on. I can add academic grade by clicking on add academic grade and, and insert the from value and to from score, for example, 50 to 65, and then insert the benchmark. It's optional to add English and Arabic message if I want. Here, then I can click save. Or I can click on import and just upload an Excel file which I, will, I can save now. I can click on save template, which will download an Excel template. Then I can fill it with the uh, academic grades values. Then I can upload it and click save. It will be added directly. After academic grades, I have the total weighted score, which is the score of the course. What will be the score or the total score of the course? I said it will be 200s, okay? And then I can add the success percentage which will be 50%. I can edit it by clicking edit and change it if I want. So I can make it 60 and so on. So, and finally, the assessment plan percentage, it's the completing a percentage of the assessment plan. For example, I have now two assessments. I created two assessments. One of them has 20% and the other one 30%, which is, which is 50%. So I have to still complete and creating more assessments to complete the 100% of the assessment percentage. So let's create a new assessment. I will create a new one by clicking on add assessments. Adding or creating a new assessment requires adding a quote for this assessment. I will give it F03 and call it final two. Now I added the code and the label or the name of the assessment. I will select the percentage. How much uh, does it weight in the course score? I will say it will be, for example, 30. So 30% from the 200 points of the course, which means it will uh, represent or present uh, 60 points from the course. Okay, 30% from the 200 points, which I decided before. Then I can select the test type. I have four test types here, CBT, computer-based test, EBT, paper-based test, alternative, and quiz. A CBT, let's see what is the main feature of CBT. When I select the test piece, CBT. Sorry, Ibrahim. Just I need to, can you just open the drop-down menu again? Okay. Those types, okay. Um, this is just giving you information. Now it's, you can see that we have here four types of exams. Okay, the quiz, I will start with the quiz, the last one. The quiz is so similar to what you are used to have on Blackboard. So on Blackboard, you can actually have a lot of features here the same. You can even open the test for like one day or two days. The students can get, take more than a chance to answer it. And then you hear, Rahim will explain this, but just giving to you an information. Alternative, it's just you can just create an alternative. So you ask, can ask your uh, students, you can just upload 
uh, instructions or even a file for them, then they have to read all this and then they have to upload back with some uh, reports or even some research and then you put, do the uh, score for, uh, and you will have all even checklists for this. The paper-based uh, type is just a paper-based exam, official summative exam. The CBT is also considered as a summative exam. Uh, so, and within CBT, you will have two types that Ibrahim is going to explain if it's already on the lab, the computer lab, or through uh, uh, other device, remote device. Thank you very much, Ibrahim. Thank you, Dr. So, as Dr. Ray said, a CBT or computer based test, we have two main types of computer based te test. If it's going to be in a lab, which is by uh, switching this off, if it's, if it's going in, uh, to be inside uh, the faculty lab or the university lab, I will just switch this switch off, online proctoring. It will not be online proctoring, it will be in the lab. So I will close it or switch it off. If I want the test to be from home, the student can take the test from home, then I will switch this on. So will I allow the student to use a normal browser like Firefox and uh, uh, Google Chrome? then I will open it. Or I want the student to download the secure browser, X51. If I want the students to download the secure browser, the secure browser is a program that will not allow the students to do anything on their machine during the exam. The student will just see the exam and start solving it and will, will be able to close the secure browser only when he finish the exam. So if I want the student to be uh, required to download the secure browser to take the test, then I will switch this off. Okay. If I want the student or I, if I want to allow the student to take the test from a tablet or a mobile, then I will switch this switch on. If I want to allow using mobile and tablets, if I see that the test should be taken on a, a, a big screen like uh, laptops and computers, then I will switch this off to a uh, uh, to, uh, to prevent the students from taking the test from uh, mobiles and tablets. The last switch, which is enabled student caching, is a good feature, especially if the test is from a lab. If I am uh, doing the test in uh, the labs of a university and there were a, a problem in the network, this feature will, uh, will allow the students to complete the test without feeling anything or any problem. How? In the beginning of the test, a file, an encrypted file, will be downloaded on the machine. The student will take the test using uh, X51, the secure browser. If the, uh, if the network was uh, uh, disconnected, for example, this file, this file of the test, will allow the students to keep taking the test normally, going to the next question until the end of the test, and it will be finished for the student. After the network uh, issue uh, will be solved if the network issue is solved. Uh, a small program, which is called Synchronizer, will synchronize all the students' responses to the server at one time. So anytime the network issue will be solved, this Synchronizer will send all the responses, even if it's after the test with more than one hour, okay? Or if even if the, in the next day. So it will be a good feature, especially in the places which have uh, issues in the network. And it only works if the student is going to use a secure browser. It doesn't work, as we can see, on normal browser. If I'm using normal browser, this feature will be switched off by default. So this was the CBT, or the computer-based test. The PBT doesn't have multiple features, just a normal PBT, and I will be able to configure it later from uh, configurations. I have two main types. If I want the system to, uh, if I want the system, or if I want to upload uh, responses or scores to the system after scanning the paper, uh, the paper sheets or the answer sheets, which is public sheets, the red sheets that Dr. Reed talked about. If I want to upload the responses and scores, I can do it. Or if I want to use the answer sheet of the system, I can also download it from the system and use it later. The alternative. Is, is not is not a test, but it's another way to uh, upload some scores to the students. For example, to send the student assignments, or if I want the students to send me 
an assignment, I can create an alternative and switch this upload assignment switch on. Then the students will be able to send me an assignment, upload an assignment from student portal. They will upload the file and then I can give score for each student. I will show you how for each student, I can give score for this assignment. Or even if it's not assignment, for example, if I want, if there were uh, an oral, uh, oral uh, exam or oral, oral test for the students, I can just uh, give them the scores on this oral test without publishing uh, a test from the back. A quiz is simple as the same as a CBT test, but the student can take the test on a normal browser. I can open the test for a long time, for example, a week. I can make this quiz available for a week. I can uh, give the ability to the students to take the test or the quiz multiple times, for example, 20 trial or 10 trials. And then I can decide how I will uh, calculate the score of this uh, test or this quiz by taking the average of scores or the highest score, the lowest score, the last one or the first trial, I can decide it. So I will just create any type of those. For example, I've created CBT and click save. Before clicking save, I should select assessment category. I have here multiple assessment categories and I can add more. I will select final and click save. As you can see, a new card has been created here, final two, which has 30%, and the percentage of completing the assessment plan uh, 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 change it to be 80. So I still have only 20% to fill the assessment. So I can here on the assessment card, let's, let me show you. I can on the assessment card take some actions. For example, I can go directly to scheduling to schedule a test on this assessment or this test. I can click here to export the results. If I want to, if I finished the test and I want to export test results, I can click on results directly from here. If I want to go to scoring sessions, scoring sessions will be used to uh, score and rate the CR or uh, SE questions for the students if I have uh, such questions. And I can click edit and delete or submit the assessment when it's finished. Or I can even retest, which is a feature. If I want to retest some students, if I want to retest as a test for some students, of course I can. Of course, as a student, a student can take the same test more than one time. So if I want, if, if some students uh, have some excuse to uh, retest this test, I will just retest him or them from this page. I can retest only one student or multiple students, or I can retest all the sessions that I created on the test. I have here some, I, I have here some uh, examples for the reports. I can export from the test, from the system. For example, here's the student scores. I have here a simple report for students and their scores on each test. I have here question quality, which gives me uh, some uh, uh, statistics uh, values uh, on the test and on each question in, in my test. I have here also the uh, student score report, which gives me the score of the students on each section. So for example, I had here in this test two sections, reading and writing. This is the score of uh, the student on uh, section one, which is reading and the percentage of this score and the score on section two and its percentage. So Dr. Walid, you can go now to a uh, bank if you want. I finished the assessment plan part. Right. And can you just yeah, yeah yes can you just uh, close the uh, sharing oh, of course okay okay let me now uh, let's uh, 
go just have a tour on the item bank. Okay, now <clears throat> to go to the item bank, uh, simply you can just from here, you can click on customize and then you select the bank user. Okay, this is uh, how you can go to the bank user. Uh, tell you about uh, two other features we, you, you may like to use as well, which is uh, actually help and support. Uh, from here, from your profile, you can just click on help. It will open a, a new page. Assalamu alaikum, can you hear me now? Yes. Salam. Sorry, yes. Uh, Zoom, Zoom crashed. Sorry. Okay, uh, so uh, as I told you, you can just look, uh, click on help, then it will open you, for you another page. Uh, don't be afraid about this, it's not secured, simply because the help pages actually are not secure. All other uh, system uh, pages are secure. You can just send anyway, click on send anyway, because of course the help pages doesn't have any uh, important information. So here you can log in here, as this is a, the help or the guideline to use. You can just switch the language by clicking here. You can use it Arabic or English. Let's see, click on English. So for example, uh, if you would like the uh, user bank, if you click on user bank, can open here, create how to create an item bank. So here you will find the steps and some guidelines how to create an item bank. If you would like to write an item, for example, you can just click here, multiple choice, for example, this is the multiple choice. This is the steps, uh, a closed list. So you can just go here and do it. And sometimes even you can have videos that will show you uh, how to do it in, in addition to the others. So this is, this is the help that you can access. If we go just to the first tab and select support, also open for us a new tab. It's also not secured because it's not doesn't have any uh, important information from here. You can just, if you found, for example, a problem, uh, an issue, so you can here just type your name, your email, and write and even attach a screenshot and send it for the support team. So by clicking submit, so you, whatever your problem, they will actually uh, reply back to you with uh, how to fix this issue and how guide you to work as well. This is not for, of course, training and how to use. It's for technical issues uh, regarding errors, bugs, whatever, or even system down. Okay, let's go back here. Uh, so we will go, now again, I will select bank user. So by bank user, I'm now logging to my area of item banks. And uh, by default, this is the landing page. Uh, here I found by just my name and the information, here my role, the default role, uh, roles actually, and here's the default is uh, like this, and this is my calendar. I can even add some in, uh, even so it will alert me. Uh, and also alerts will be here. Uh, this is very important thing, which actually in audit information. It's because now it will, you can know that already as a bank user, I logged in as a bank user uh, on this date, on this time. This is the last access to me. This is before, so on. So you can actually trace who has who logged into your bank. If you are not, of course, if you are just a user, you will not be able to uh, know more information than this. Okay, now let's go to for, for the main tabs. We have here four tabs. My banks, items, tests, and reports. This is the main four tabs. Let's go to my, my banks. Within my banks, this is the main page. It's also a landing page for items. On the left side, you will have here the banks you have access to. So here I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have access to five banks, but it, my role may be different from one bank to another. So here you will find the legend for this. So a star, uh, uh, blue star means that I'm the owner of the bank. If it's a, a green flag, I'm co-owner. 
it's just gray person like this uh, or figure and a bank user, just a bank user who have limited access to the bank. So here, this are these banks, the English 110, uh, 503. Uh, this is also mathematics. I am the owner. However, this uh, course, which is uh, this bank, IT bank, this is not course. Remember, these IT banks, it will be used for many years and it's not a temporary usage. Here it's a local Arabic, Arabic language. So I am here co owner. So the other, this, course, this bank, actually, the owner is another person and I'm not only. Uh, Co-owner. Who is the owner of this bank? Is Mrs. Wafa, engineer Wafa. Uh, how much she is the owner of this bank? I'm just co-owner. She just gave me, shared with me to be a co-owner with her. Uh, here I have another bank which is QWER007 something like this. Oh, I'm here just a use bank user. So I have a very limited privilege which has been defined by the bank user. Maybe just I can write items, but I cannot see any items or even see specific items as we're going to see. Who, can, who is the owner of this bank? It's uh, engineer Abd Rabu, who is a project manager or in KKU and so on. So this is this is the banks we have here. You have access here or I have access actually because it's my account. Uh, let's go to uh, the right side. Uh, here on the right side, you have also a dashboard here. How many blueprints we have here in the bank? A blueprint actually is a set of conditions that you give give you uh, you enter for the system to help you uh, to help the system to create uh, a test a simple a test automatically with uh, after applying you the conditions you already give to the system here i have 50 percent of my tests published this means that okay i i, have, I told you before that a publish publishing means that the, the test is now moving from the item bank to the course so 50% of my tests, created tests, actually are published, which actually is a 19. Also tests here, I have also different tests. This is like published, how many are published. And here, uh, test structure, this is the, each test uh, available. And what's the name of the test, how many sections and how many test forms, because tests may include one or more uh, test forms or versions. Then uh, at the end here, I have bank users. So uh, because I'm the owner here, I can see that Mr. Abdurabbo, engineer Abdurabbo actually is a user. Uh, this is me, I'm the owner, engineer Rana, uh, engineer Wafa. I even can click and see what are, when they, the last time they looked into the item bank. In the middle, we have here also some uh, infographics or graphs about my bank. So this is a bank structure. This is the bank we are here. Uh, which is called actually uh, English 110 because it's already here, the first one uh, on the top. So uh, this is the topics. This is uh, the topics or uh, main uh, domains of the bank, a general grammar, QTI, reading, uh, writing, and how many objectives in each topic and how many items actually are available on these topics. Here also you can see uh, what, uh, a distribution of the it, uh, by item type. So here I have uh, mostly my item bank is uh, MCQ. You can click here and see, okay, it's 89 questions, MCQ, multiple choice questions. Here, this is true and false. I have 37 items. This is rich essay, it's uh, nine uh, items. This is essay, plain, plain essay, which is six items. The difference between, we have two types of essay. One is actually rich, means that the students actually can, can format his answer, can make it bold, can add symbols, whatever. But the plain, it's just he's typing. He doesn't, cannot make it bold, underline, whatever. And you can define what are the formatting that can be, the student can use. The closed text, this is especially for language. Uh, I have here three items. This is uh, multiple response. This is short answer. This is reading scenario and about reading scenario, I'm going to tell it's mainly for language and medicine, where you can, uh, in language, simply it's having a passage and a number of questions related to the, each passage. So the student will not be able to answer any question unless he reads the passage. And he maybe he refer each question, refer to a specific part on the passage. The same with the medicine, they have this, as are commonly, it's commonly used for medicine. So they have like a case, a patient with a case specific, some information, maybe they include the x-ray, 
uh, some other tests, whatever information about the case. And then they start asking a number of questions about this patient. So this is also a case or a scenario. This is, can be reading and other. This is closed test. This is for, also for language and matching. So this is simply um, our my, my bank's dashboard. Whenever I click on other bank, I will start to see uh, different information based on each test. Now I would like to uh, log into an item bank. Let's log into English. This is a, a bank which has uh, five topics, as we said, and a number of questions. So I will click here. I will log in here for the item bank. So I will start to log into the secure area of the item bank called English 110. And the code is English 110, Inc. 110. This is how it looks like, how the item banks looks like. First, let's go up on the menu. We can see that, okay, in this bar, my bank, now I am on the bank, the items uh, menu. It's no longer banks. So I moved, automatically moved me to the items. And this is the bank, English bank. I can switch, I can change the bank here by clicking on the right click uh, side top. Uh, change bank so I can click here and select another bank as well okay and here on the left side I have banks and here is the topics which already we have a look, an idea about it uh, just from from the dashboard if I click on in, in any topic I start to see the number of items so in the right side I can see the items uh, on each topic and these topics actually can be just single level or even I can define unlimited number of uh, depth levels. Also here search, if I click here and search, it allows me, of course, of course, you expect that after some time, your item bank will have hundreds and maybe thousands of items. So you will really need some time to search for some items to, so here you can just click search and start saying, okay, this is a bank of tickets. I'm going to look for, for example, the reading questions. Learning outcomes, you can search even by the learning outcomes, uh, item types, whatever, and then you can click uh, filter. You can also have advanced search, which will open a new uh, page and will allow you actually to search for almost you know, infinity number of things, even bank categories, item types, uh, learning taxonomies, statistics, uh, audit about uh, all the information, who, who writes the item, when, and so on custom fees, which we're going to handle it, content and rubric. This is the content of the text of the question and even the, the rubric of uh, open-ended questions and even others, which is like item code, content area, uh, keywords, uh, description uh, of the item, the duration. So it's like, you can look, uh, search for your items easily. Let's go back to the tab of the item bank, of the main banks. Here, as I said, this is the item. So you have here item, this is the item code, this is the item description, this is the type, it's MCQ. This is the item status, which actually means that this, the item actually is, uh, we, we can, you can define different uh, item status, maybe new, maybe pending, maybe reviewed once, reviewed twice, ready, active, deleted, released, uh, not used. You can define whatever you would like as an item status. Here is version because the system actually is handling item version. So if you now created an item and you need to create another version, you can easily create it. If you create an item and you send it for students and it already has now students and uh, scores on the same item, then you discovered, oh, wow, this item has there is some problem with one of the options. So you start changing it. By default, the system, because it's already became like a record, uh, with scores, the system will automatically create a new version for the same item and will use only the, the newest one. And even you can go back to the older version if you would like. Here's the score of the item. And here we have three icon, icons. If you, if you click here, you can see the item and some information about it. This is the metadata. Let's click here. So this is a preview. So you can meet here what is the capital of Albania. And here there's the, the three options. Okay, and this is, a, by the way, this is uh, the, uh, the key. Here, if you click on the statistics, actually there is no statistics now. And no data, I don't know, maybe my internet uh, is somehow uh, not quick. Uh, I'm just going to reading. Uh, here you can edit. If you click here, you can edit the items uh, with this uh, pencil. So, 
you can be able to edit the item and we will come to this uh, later how to edit or write an item um okay let's also go here if you click on these three dots you'll start to see different features like view is data edit uh, the item duplicate so you can create a new version not version version means the same item no but you can take a copy of the same item so you can just start changing on it so for example if you would like to create an equivalent item but you're going just just to change some words or some uh, numbers so no need to write everything and put all the configuration for that. You just click, duplicate, you have new item with new code. Then it goes, enter, edit it, change whatever you would like and then save it. So it's like takes like maybe less than one minute to have a new version, equivalent version. Delete, here to create a new version from item. Here to try out and I will show you how to try it. And here to export QTI. So after you write the items, you can export it to QTI. Uh, uh, and use it on different system. And by the way, here also, if we go to the main menu, here you create the items. Here you can export item cards. So you can export the items in Word, Microsoft Word or QTI. You can try, I will show you here more, you can even import the items from QTI. So if you already have item banks, questions on a Blackboard, you can export from the Blackboard and import here. So if I clicked here on QTI, you can just, uh, click and uh, look for the items, the files you get from uh, uh, Blackboard and then you import. But we really uh, urge you that there's some limitation because QTI is a standard format that can be uh, uh, transferred between different systems. But sometimes some information may not really transfer in a good shape. So whatever you're going to import, you need to revise. Uh, you can also import the statistics. You can copy and move item from one bank to another bank. You can even bulk update, which is a really nice feature, which has been added uh, recently because uh, during the pilot phase, like you have imported, for example, and let me tell you Blackboard, when you export items from Blackboard, there's something in how they export the items. So when it's imported here, the score is not included on the package, which comes from Blackboard. So you can simply import the items and then bulk update. You click on sub, sorry, I have to click. Of course, I have to select items. Of course, it's plugin. Then you can create here. It will open for you a screen. Uh, uh, then it will enable you actually to change your score for all these items on one click. So you will not be doing it for a, a long time. Like here, of course, I only select one item so I can just uh, change the score like here at three and apply for or even add it and apply for all so it will change the scores for all questions uh, finally uh, so you can do this for score for cognitive level for learning outcomes and delete so this is generally uh, we can also have a look uh, yes this is also good here there's one square what uh, what we call it uh, one icon uh, if you click on it it's, it's black like this this means that if you have a passage and questions it will be uh, grouped together. So yeah, uh, if it's like this, you see, can there's all questions are like uh, in uh, like in a table. If you click again on this, you will find some difference that some uh, some questions start to have this arrow. If you click the arrow, you will start to see that you have a reading scenario and a number of questions which actually are related to this scenario. So you can actually now see the questions and the passage together, and you can read and score. But it's very important if you decided to take one question or two cool questions from this and put in any test, automatically they will bring the passage with them. So this is uh, good as well. So let me, I will just click on this and we'll click on try out uh, to show you how to, uh, to see the item, how well the items look like if it's going to be online test. This is a passage. So can you see here, it's just a passage and one picture, you can easily insert it. Then I will click next, then it will bring the first item I selected here. You can see that on the left side, you will have uh, the passage. On the right side, you have the question and even you can show the correct answer and see which one is correct to review your answer key. Uh, okay, this is similar to what the student will be able to see on the screen. So it gives you an idea. How, how it will look, the item look like. Then if I click on another ne next item, it will look the same as well. The same passage, but new question now. 
Now let's uh, suppose that we uh, we're going to create an item back. Uh, okay, I will click here now on this icon. I will click new bank. I will click. I can even click I new create new item bank by different way. One way to go, just come here and I click on I new uh, new bank, or even I can come here for banks and I can create new banks. So you can create either from my banks and items. Why I'm saying this? Because if you don't have any banks, which will be the, your case when you open the platform, you will only see this icon. You will not be able to open the icon, the items uh, tablet, uh, uh, sorry, uh, menu tab. When you click on item bank, you start to give you like this uh, uh, part, which is actually, uh, you can have to write the item code. You just do it once. I will type, for example, sorry, you type in Arabic. It's better, of course, you write, especially the code to be in English. The, the name, you can type whatever you write. You can just physic, for example. Then the workspace, the workspace here is equivalent to the college. So you can just keep it unsigned, but it will not be written to any college, but you can select the college, uh, which is uh, actually you are, already there, uh, engineering, uh, whatever, uh, or uh, medicine. You can select the display language of the bank, it's Arabic or English, you can add some description. And here is defined on uh, ILOs, learning outcomes. Defining the I learning outcomes, uh, where are you going to define it on the higher level or the leaf node? The topic, it's the higher level of the, the, the domains of the bank or in a leaf node. Uh, so you can decide from here. Uh, it's up to you, of course. Uh, using cognitive levels, are you going to use cognitive levels? Mostly, yes. It's really required, recommended for this, and I think the university requires it. So now it's by default no. If you click on yes, then you have to select which cognitive levels you are going, which taxonomy you're going to use. If you click here on this drop menu, you will find Bloom's taxonomy. They are already uh, imported for you. You have a Web's depths of knowledge. You have Teams taxonomy, and even you can define any taxonomy you would like to use. If you're using Bloom is fine, just select Devs Teams or a specific, uh, th you need to do this. This is the item, the item bank configuration. You need to do this before you create the item bank, okay? Also linking the ILOs with cognitive level. This is like you know, some persons, you know, you have learning outcome and you cognitive level. Sometime you write the learning outcome, it's just only related to a cognitive level. So it's, this is, uh, knowledge, this is uh, applying, this is analysis. So you can just link them together. So whenever you select the learning outcome, it by default, it will select the uh, object, uh, cognitive level, but you may not like you like to do this. You may like it, okay, I will write uh, somehow the term, uh, I'm writing the ob objectives not to really uh, uh, relate to a cognitive level. So I can use, you can use or not. Uh, using competency level, if you your test your bank can be the, uh, built on competency levels, uh, it's fine. You can define or just keep it uh, no. Difficulty levels, okay. As an expert, you can have uh, initiation about the difficulty level of the questions. We have two types of difficulty. One is the expert point of view. So you, as an expert, you can say, okay, this item is easy, very easy. It's hard, so on. And there is another difficulty, which is which the system will get based on the responses of the students. The other type, the, student, the system will handle it. So don't worry about it. But here you can define, okay, the difficulty level you're going to use. Are you going to see, use three levels, easy, mid, hard, or four levels, or five levels, or even you can define your own. So I will you just use three levels. This item code, simply it's, it's yeah, you can just leave it. Yeah, yeah. However, you can try this. It will give you more information about the code, but it will make it longer. Then you can uh, uh, click save. Oh, the, sorry. Here, if you click on here, uh, I can tell you this configuration actually is just is, is the most important configuration for item bank. There are a lot of other configuration you, you can define. So if you unclick this, if you create this, the bank will be created. If you check, it will open, create the bank and open you the, the other configuration that you may like to change. Okay, if I click here, uh, I will not check this, and uh, but I will show you how to go to the other configuration. 
I will click not save, so it will be automatically create an item back. Sorry, I know I'm going, as we said before, we are going too quickly, looking for different things in a very short time. But as I said, you are not expected by the end of this uh, workshop uh, that you will be able to do everything with yourself. You, we need you to have an overview of the whole system. And then during face-to-face -face, uh, sessions, you will be able to gradually, hands-on, use and learn more about the system and try it. And in any ways, yeah, I, I can promise you, we cannot promise you that we are going to to explain all the features in the system because the system has a lot of features. So the same like Microsoft Word or Excel, no one actually knows all, or no one trains us on all the features, but you mean, you know the basics, the default, the most important, and then by, by practice you get more and even by using the, uh, uh, the materials, the videos, the short videos, you will be able to uh, do, know this. I don't know why it's taking too much. Hopefully it hasn't, uh, Close the website because I have been opening this, this screen for a long time with no action. Uh, still, it's yeah. In general, just in, in general, when when we talk about till it opens, hopefully it will not uh, uh, close the secure chart. Uh, yeah, it's expected from you that you will create the the the, the, uh, the domains or the topics on your item bank, and then you create create a schema. The structure you may use one level uh, like chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Maybe under each chapter you start to put sub domains or sub categories. So this will help you organize your items during the item writing, during the even reviewing, whatever uh, using the bank for a long time. Then for each question you will be able to define the objective, the cognitive level, and uh, the uh, and different information like the score, the time. Who wrote the item? Uh, what, how much? How much time is required to answer the question, and so on. I think I am out. I think I'm out. Right? I'm out. Okay. Hmm. This is one of the things that you need to know that if you are opening the page for a long time, it will start to do this because simply it, uh, there's a, a, a secure channel which has been created when you looked into the system. So if it's go, taking too much time, this means that you know, the channel has been closed. Either it will be able to reopen the channel again uh, or it will log you out and give you, you have to log in again. So, okay, it has been created. Okay, great. Uh, now let me just go quickly on uh, the bank configuration before I pass the stage to my colleague here. In this bank you can click, but I would like actually to use another bank, not a bank one. Let me use this because it may have more uh, things to show you. What does it mean a bank configuration? As I showed you before, we can define simply the default one, the most important one. But if you go here on the on this icon and click on bank configuration, you will have a lot of features that you can configure for your item bank. It's not important that you know everything or even use all of them, but just generally, here's the basic information of the item. So it's a code, the workspace. So you can even now change after you create the item, even display. So you can change some of the things here uh, after you create the bank. This is a learning taxonomy. This is what we uh, has been used here. It's just uh, uh, Bloom's taxonomy. It's remembering, reading, applying, understanding, applying, and so on. You can create or you can delete each, whatever you hear. You can just click on edit. Then you can even uh, change the text. You can even enter an Arabic title if you would like to have a bilingual uh, label for these uh, levels as well. Or you can here click and change again the taxonomy. Of course, if you already have items on your item bank, if you requested this, it will not be access successful because you already created item banks which have been aligned with specific uh, taxonomy. So you cannot just shift it like this. Uh, difficulty level as well. Here competency, you can define here whatever competency you would, would like to add. 
uh, statistics. This is just some configuration. You may not, yeah, you just keep the, the, the default. Here's items, this is, which is very important item steps. Actually, I'm looking for this. So here in this item bank, I define how many level uh, status, one, two, three, four, four items. It's new, reviewed one, ready not to be used. Who defines this? I, I just click on add status and I just define, okay, I will do it like uh, to be deleted, for example. And here it requires Arabic. Okay, I will not add Arabic. I will just copy paste the English. Here, category. It has just here need to, to decide about the category of the, the status here. Well, you may select expired. Expired, so it will not be uh, used anyway. And then you can click here, you can select the color you would like to use, maybe uh, uh, brown, for example, and then I will just click save. So you will be able, while, while writing the items or even the items that you can change its steps from one uh, status to another. Uh, okay, here's the custom fields. This is, ah, yes, this is good. That, for example, you would like to have some information to store with each item, like you would like to attach uh, a file with some item with like the, the, the source you use it or even add a URL. So you can just click here, custom field. So I said, okay, uh, uh, we can, I just say, okay, the book. Okay, or the, the page. For example, if the page used. And then the type, it's just general, it's not specific. And then here you can select attachment. And you can even here type uh, some description and we'll save. Once you do this, so for each item you're going to write, you will be able to attach a file with, under this uh, field. Here for this bank, the, the user actually created the Ceph level, which maybe language people know more the source, its URL, and the page we added now. The content area is actually another definition that I mentioned you can add for your uh, test. Here, admin year, it's simply that when you, are, you have statistics and, we, and you would like to add statistics for each round, you can add, create here rounds or admin years to store the statistics, okay? Uh, I think now I, I was able to give you a general idea about what does it mean, uh, uh, an item bank, let me give a uh, chance to my colleague to, to give you, uh, to guide you how to write some types of item quest or questions on the item bank. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reed. Thank you. So Dr. Reed showed us how to create a new bank and how to configure it. I will just go to a new bank that I just created and see how we will build the structure of this bank and then create items. So first of all, I want to build the bank tree or the bank structure. I want to create the categories, the chapters, the topic and units. I can just click on this category icon to start creating categories, which will be the first level of categories in the bank. Okay, I will just have here the bank structure. I can just copy it from here. I'll give it a code and a name. Then I can click save. Clicking save will save this category or clicking save and new. Save and new will save the category and will allow me to create a new category. So the next one will be validity. I'll just copy it from here. Save and new. Or, and here. So I want to create new categories under introduction, the first category. I can click on this plus icon beside the introduction. Clicking on this will start creating categories under this category. So I will click on plus. And for example, I will add chapter one or C one and create chapter. I will click save and new to create new chapter. For example, I will call it chapter two. Okay. 
under validity, I want to create some. And so on, I can do it as I want. So I don't have a limit. I can keep creating categories. For example, under chapter one, I want to create a new topic. For example, T, I will call it T1. I can keep creating under topic one. I can create subtopic one and so on. I can keep going to create my bank tree as I want. I will be able to create uh, items on the last level on each level, on each category. So, so I can't create items on introduction or on chapter one because they still have children. They still have categories under this. I can create items on topic one because it doesn't have categories under it. I can create on chapter two here because it doesn't have categories under it. I can even create items directly on reliability, which is the first uh, category level here, but I can still create item because it doesn't have uh, categories under it. So before creating items, let's do the last step, which is uh, creating or defining the learning outcomes on my bank. I can. I create or define the learning outcomes on each level by clicking on the level uh, and start creating a learning outcomes, or I can add the learning outcomes directly on the uh, bank on each uh, category. I will show you how now. I'll just click on bank objectives, which will allow me to uh, create uh, objectives or learning outcomes. For example, I will start by clicking or using the uh, first method, which is adding or creating. I will click add. I have to create or add a code. I'll call it 001. The objective test student will be able to do and so on. This will be my first outcome. I have here to select the topic because I am inserting the uh, outcomes on all the bank levels. So I have to select the topic. It will be on introduction topic. And then I have to select the cognitive level. Why I am selecting a cognitive level? Because in the configurations, in the configurations of this bank, I selected that the outcomes or the objectives will be linked to uh, the cognitive levels. So I have to select the cognitive levels that is linked to objectives. I will make it a, a remembering and I can click save or save and new to save and then create a new outcome. Of course, this method adding will take a lot of time. So we have import method. Import method, which will be uh, by using an Excel file, a template file, I can upload it one time and all the objectives in this Excel file will be imported directly. I can click on import, save the template. This method actually is used all, all over the system. I can import a lot of things, a lot of information on the system in course module, in bank module. I can import a lot of information by using this method, by saving a template of Excel and fill it with the information I want, then upload it to the system again. I will download this template objectives. I'll just open it. Here I, in the Excel file, I can see that I have the same uh, uh, values it, it uh, asked me to insert in adding. I have to insert code, objective text, cognitive levels, and a topic. So I will just copy from the Word file I have here. I'll just add them here. Okay. I'll give them, them some code, for example, 002, and so on. I'll select cognitive level for each one. Okay, and I will assign topic for each one of them. So now I have this file. It has some outcomes on all over the bank on topic number one and two and three. I will save the file and just upload it again. I can click here and select the file to upload it. Sorry, let's go to the folder. Here is our file. I can just upload it or I can drag it from anywhere and drop it on this area to import it. So I will click import. If the file has no issue, all the outcomes will be imported directly. As you can see, all the outcomes in the file has been imported successfully. 
So now I have created my bank. I have creating, created my bank structure and categories. I inserted and defined the outcomes. My configuration is set as I want. Now I can start creating items. So let's start creating items. I will go to, for example, chapter two, create my first item. I will just click on create. Now I will not go through all the item types. You can do it yourself and try it uh, even more in the uh, 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 next training. But I will show you some important item types. For example, I will start with multiple choice, the MCQ question item. In this first page, you will see the same first page in all item types, general. It's the same in all item types. So what can I do in general? I can define, for example, the duration, the duration, the duration of an item. How many minutes I, I expect the student will take to solve this question? I will just click one, one minute. I can even change the author of this item. If it's not me, I can select another one who did uh, write, uh, wrote this question. I can select the objective. So here I can link the objective or the outcome or my item to an outcome. Of course, I can see only two outcomes because I am on a specific topic. On this topic, there are two only two outcomes. So I will select one of them. Once I select this outcome, as you can see, the uh, cognitive level uh, applying is uh, selected uh, automatically because the system knows that this outcome is linked to this uh, object, uh, sorry, cognitive level. I can select a, a content area if I have content areas, or I can add more. If I add it from the configuration, I will be able to select content area. Of course, I can select a difficulty level. I still in the configurations. I selected to have only three levels of a difficulty level. So I will say this question is medium. If I have a passage, which we will see how to create new passage, I can link the passage uh, or I can link my item to any passage by selecting from this list. When we create a new passage, we, we will see passages in this list. Even if this item was used in uh, tests before, I will be able to see this item usage. Of course, this is a new item, so I have no item usage in tests before. This table is empty now. I can even add comment if I want. If I am commenting on the author or the writer of this item I can for example uh, just so I have here a comment and the writer or anyone can even add a reply on my comment so comments and replies can be added on the item and of course here are the item status log if I have more than one status or the status of this item has been changed, I will see when these scissors were changed and who changed it. So let's go to the next step, custom fields. If I added custom fields in the configurations, I will be able to add those custom fields to the item. So for example, I have a custom field called source. I can add the source of this question or item. Even if it's a link or URL, I can add URL. Even if I want to add an attachment, so I can click on add attachment to upload or import a new file on this uh, item. So I will go to content, which is the most important tab in uh, this page on creating new item. So I can here insert the stem of the, uh, of the question. So I will go to Word. I can write it directly in this text editor and edit it using those uh, options. I can just copy it from Word. So I will here and copy this question from the world. As you can see, it, it took the same uh, uh, edit from the world, the same font size, the same color and uh, size, and bold as I copied it from Word. So I, here I added the stem. Then I can do the same with the options. So here. And here are my options. Of course, I don't need this highlight, so I will just remove the highlight from here. May, may I 
May I just make sorry, uh, Rahim, May I just make a small okay. announcement because uh, I'm afraid I would forget. Uh, just, uh, dear colleagues, when when you log into the the item bank, uh, now you may find some difference, few difference on the the, the some of the icons here where where Ibrahim is showing and the, the other one. Actually, we are going to uh, make a, an update soon. So it will look the same. We just, you know, the same, everything is the same, just we refine some of the options, improve some of the performance of the, the system. So uh, soon you will find the same screen on your uh, platform, but he's not now showing from King Khaled, he's showing from other server. But just to give you information, if you look in today uh, if, and you find difference, a yeah, small difference, don't be worried. Okay? Within two days, uh, maybe early next week, we'll you see the same picture, the same screen uh, Ibrahim is showing now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Ali. So here I added the stem of the question and the options. I can select the answer key or the correct answer from these uh, options. For example, it will be the first one. I can go anytime to preview to make sure that I am a, a to, to make sure how the uh, student will see this question. Of course, I can add the score here. And as we are adding the score, let's talk about the partial credit. Am I going to use partial credit or no? If I am not going to use partial credit, then I will have only one answer key with only one score. So let's go to preview and see how it will be affected. So I have only one option which is true. When I select it, I will get the score or the point of this question. Any other option will not give me the point. So what if I used partial credit? I will select partial credit. Now it changed it. I can add a, a score or partial credit for each uh, option. So for example, I will add here two points and here one point. And for example, let's see, let's say a half point or a 0.5 points for this option and zero for the last one. So let's go to preview. So as you can see, the total uh, points changed to be two, the maximum uh, points of, of the max uh, of the options. The first one, I will get two out of two. Second option will give me only one out of two. Third one will give me 0.5 and the fourth will give me zero. So here is how I can use partial credit. Of course, I can add also uh, an option for shuffling. I can shuffle uh, the options. So as you remember, content first, then construct uh, factorial and a cre a creation. I can click on review. The options has been shuffled. If I went to edit then again to review, the options are shuffled again. So the students, if each student will have a different uh, options uh, uh, order from the other students. So what about the penalty point? If I'm using the no uh, partial credit, I can add penalty points. So for example, let's say one. If the student got the uh, right answer, he will get two points. If if no, if he doesn't, if he doesn't have the right answer, he will be punished with a negative one point. So let's try it and review. If I selected the cor uh, this is uh, not the correct answer, so I get minus one. The correct answer will give me the content, will give me two out of two. Any other will give me minus one. So here is how to create an a, a MCQ item. Of course, we have some layout view. If I want to change the number of columns for uh, viewing options, for example, let's make it two. Let's go to the preview. I have now two columns of options. I want all the option to be in the same, for example, let's say four. If I want all the option to be in the same line, I will make four columns and so on. Okay, let's save this item, save and exit. Let's go to another item, it's multiple response. The difference between multiple choice and multiple response, let's create multiple response, that in multiple response, the student can select more than one Option. So as you can see, general is the same as general tab from uh, MCQ. So we will not go to, uh, through it again. We will just go directly to content. And by the way, all these fields are optional. We, we don't have to 
add all these uh, uh, fields so we can create our items and later on we can edit the item to link it to objectives or uh, set a difficulty level or whatever. Let's go to content. The same as before, we can add, I will add just the same stem, okay. Okay, here's a stem. And then I can add the option. So let's say that the option number two and three are the correct option. Now I, I am using exact match. I'm not using virtual match. We will see what is the difference between them. Of course, we have the same option, shuffle, if I want to shuffle these options of, or not. And now I have this. I, I am using a scoring method exact match, and I will set the score to be two. So when will the student get two points? Only if he uh, answered or selected those two answer keys, those two options, because I'm using exact match. So let's see how. I'll click on review. So selecting content will not give me anything. Selecting this option will not give me anything. Only selecting both correct options. Even if I selected one of them, I still have zero. Only selecting both of them will give me two out of two. What if I don't want this? I want the student to get a score for each option so I can use partial match. Partial match will allow me to give the student a score for each option. So let's try it. I will give this option one. I'll give this option also one. For example, let's give this option 0.5. And let's add another score for this option, but it will be negative 0.5. Let's try it. Okay. So I will go to the review. So now selecting the first one will give me one, one out of two. Selecting the other option will give me two out of two. But when I select another option, it's still giving me two out of two. I, maybe I don't want this. I don't want the student to select all the options to get score. Now, uh, as you can see, when he selected all the options, he got a, a zero. But let's see more options. I have here, I love, oh, let's, let's see the limit of responses. How do I want the student to answer this question? Do I want him or allow him to uh, uh, select more than options that I, uh, I selected? For example, I selected here two, only two. So I can limit the responses to number of correct responses. Let's go and see how the question will be affected. So when I select one option and another, now I, can, I can't select any other options. They are disabled. Only I can select only two options because I selected the number of correct options will be two. As you can see, when the student selects the first one, he got 0.5. When he select the last one, he didn't get he didn't got the negative 0.5. Why? Because I didn't select that the student or this question can be have a negative point. If I switch it this on, then the question can be graded by negative score. So let's try it again. Review. Now this the question can have a negative score. If I turn it off, allowing a negative score for the question, then the student can't get a negative score, only zero if he didn't uh, edit the correct answer. Okay, so let's, and also, of course, the same options uh, on the MCQ and viewing the uh, options. So let's save this one. Of course, the true or false question is the same as MCQ, so let's not go to it. Let's see how the close list will work. Let's go to content. Close list, I want to the student to complete some blanks in a, a sentence. So let's complete the following. I will start adding the question or the stem here. For example, and I want the student to add a question or select a, a, an option in this blank. So I want to add a blank here. How can I tell the system there is a blank here? I can just click on this uh, button, a response. I will insert a response. Then 
I want to add another blank, so I will go again and click it. Now, as you can see, I, I have response one, response two. I want to fill the options of each response, so I will add option two and three. I want to add more option, I will add here and add four. So those will be the options of the first blank. The second blank here, I will make it eight, nine, and I want to add another option to make it 10. So let's select the correct option from down here. So one plus one, I will select the correct answer is two and four plus four, I will select the correct answer is eight. Let's go to review. I have here, when the student select the correct answer, he will get one out of one because I selected the scoring method to be exact match as before. So the student will get the points only if he selected all the correct answers. So let's see how will we add a reading scenario or a scenario. So when I create a new item, I can go down to select reading scenario. I can create a reading scenario to link it later to any uh, count of items. So I will click on reading scenario. Reading scenario. I can go directly to content. I can, or I only have to add the content of this scenario. I don't know if I have a scenario here. Okay, I have a message. I can copy it directly from Word and just add it, copy and paste it in the text editor. Of course, I can write it if I want. I can even add a picture. If I want to add a picture or media file, I can just click on here in the mid, uh, picture icon and select the picture. Here I have, for example, this one. I can click on OK. Then I can control the size of this picture. So for example, I will make it here and I'll make it in the center. Now I have created my passage. I can save it and I can link it later to any number of items. Before linking the items to this passage, I will create the last type of items, which is uh, essay, I will select essay with rich text. The difference be between rich text and plain text. In this type, the student can edit and format his uh, answer using a text editor. In the essay with plain text, the student will just insert his answer using a plain text editor. No uh, editing or formatting are available in this type. So I will click on essay with rich text. The same as in general tab, I will just go to content. And as you can see, we have here a new uh, tab, which is called Dropbox. We will we'll go to it right now. So I will just add the stem of the question here. So I have, okay, here I see question. And I will just paste it. Of course, I can still edit it and add any media I want. Here I can select which uh, features or options in, edit, uh, in text editor I want the student to use. So I can, for example, I will just unselect those ones and I will unselect this. So in review, the student will have only those uh, features or options to edit the text. Before saving the item, I can I should make sure that I set the score. So for example, I will set it to be two, the score of this question. And I can go to rubrics. I have here more than one type of rubrics. So I have holistic uh, uh, the rubrics, so I can add steps of uh, to uh, for the reader to uh, to know how it, uh, he will uh, rate as a uh, student answer. I can add analytical, which have more than one dimension. It has two dimensions of uh, uh, steps and uh, rubrics. Or I can use new rules, which gives me uh, uh, steps, and I have no rules to uh, add scores for them. I will use holistic, for example. And I will add step. So in step one, I will give it score zero and student didn't provide answer. Step two, it will have one point, student provided one answer and so on. I can add another step for two, student provided. So I can add uh, the steps I want. Those steps will be uh, previewed by the reader when the reader uh, starts rating the student's uh, answers. 
as the reader will be able to see the, those steps to help him on reading the uh, student answer. I'll click save. Oh, of course, before saving this item in the general tab, now I have a passage in, in my uh, bank. So I can click on select passage. Now I can select a passage from my list. So now this item will be linked to this passage. So I can save it now. And the item, this uh, item will be linked to the passage. Whenever I uh, select this item to be in any test, the passage will be with this item directly. What if I want to uh, link another item that has been created already in the bank? I can just click on this menu and click on link. So this MCQ item, I will link it to a passage. Where is the passage you want to link it? I will select it from here. I have the passage code and just save to link it to the passage. Now I showed you how to uh, create uh, some type of items. Let's go to see how we will create this. Which will be the final step here. So uh, let's start by creating a test. If I don't have still any test, I will see this page as I can see now, empty uh, page, doesn't have any test yet. I just collect on tests, then I am uh, on test explorer page. I will click on create test or just click here in create new test to create a new test. We have two uh, types of uh, tests. First type paper-based and online tests. Uh, or CBT uh, test. What is the difference of them? Of course, uh, there are some uh, item types that can be used in CBT and can not be used on paper based. For example, drag and drop. I can uh, add a drag and drop uh, item on a paper based test and so on. Some uh, uh, items can't be used or added to a paper based test. So for example, I will add or select online testing. We have two methods on creating and generating this test. We have the manual uh, type or method and the automatic. We will see now how to create a manual test by just selecting the items I want uh, to be in this test. So I will change the name of this test. Let's call it test one. And click next. In this step, I can manage and create the test as a test sections. So if I want the test to be only one section, so I will just click next and uh, go to adding the items to the test. But if I want to add more than a section in my uh, test, for example, reading, writing, vocabulary in the test, so I can edit this section uh, name. So I will call it reading. I can add a new section. And for example, another one, or I can just stick to two sections. Now I have two sections, then I can click next. Here is a summary of my test information, the test name, the method, and the type, and even the sections I added. Now I can click on save, and it will direct me automatically to the test page. Now, as you can see, I have this empty test page. I have two empty sections, section Number one, reading have no question. Section number two, writing have also no questions. So I can start adding items by clicking on add item. So adding items is so easy. I can select from the items in my bank. Of course, we just created this bank uh, now. So I have only those items we created uh, minutes ago. So I can select the item. Of course, I can group the items with passage. So it will be easier for me <clears throat> to see the items that are linked to any passage. So for example, let's see that, uh, let's say that we, I want this item, multiple response item to be in section one. So I will just click on it and drag it to this area, this, to this test items area. It's empty right now, but when I drop it here, there will be an item here. As you can see, the item code is here. Now I only have one item. No, it's not one item. It's a reading scenario item. If I open it, I will see two items are linked to this passage. So I will go directly to a writing section by selecting from this drop-down list, and I will select writing. As you can see, we are still in test one we created. 
in form one. If we have more than one form, we will be able to see the forms here. And I have here the sections. So I am now on section two, which is writing. It has no items yet. So I will select those two items and just drag them. I selected only the items, not the passage, as you can see. So I will select them and, and just drag and drop them. When, I, when they are added to the uh, test, the passage also will be with them in the test. So let's go. Of course, we can use search. We can click search as Dr. Lead did in the bank. We can use filter to filter the items to get the items we want to add this test. So I will just go back. Going back will uh, uh, take me again to the test page. Now I have in section one, I have one uh, item. In section two, I have two items are linked to the passage. Okay. So I can create new form. If I click on new form, I can, for example, click F2 and form two. And click two. I have now a new empty form. I can start adding items to it. Or I can, if I want to clone this form, I can click on clone. It will be, it will create a new form using the same items in this form. So I cloned it and even I can shuffle uh, items in this form and click save. Then a new form will be created with the same items, but shuffled. But this feature actually will help me more in PPT, in paper-based tests, because in CBT configurations, we already have a, a shuffle option that will uh, shuffle the test uh, for each student when he log in uh, browser. So let's go uh, fast or quickly on a configuration of a test to see how to configure this test. We will not see all the configuration, but only the important uh, configurations. So I will click on configurations here. Sorry. Okay. Okay. It will show me some configurations I can set the configuration from here, from the bank test. And after publishing this test, which we will see uh, tomorrow, inshallah, we can uh, change those configurations from a uh, delivery module or from course owner module. But let's see uh, what are those configurations. I can change test name. I can set the score of this test. I can even go to forms and set, see how many forms I have. I have here three forms. Two of them have items, as I can see, I have here three items and in this form i don't have any item and the third one i have also three items in sections i can set the section sections configurations here is the navigation mode between sections how will the student move between sections traversal which will allow him to move as he want from section number one to section two and section three and go back to review or only forward only which will prevent the student to go back to any sections that he has submitted already. So if the student finished section reading and went to uh, the section number two writing, he will not be able to go back again to read. Do I want to shuffle the sections or stick to the order that I uh, created them with? So each student will have the same order or I can shuffle them. Inside each section, I have the same uh, uh, options and feature, but for items, I have I can shuffle items. I can uh, uh, change the navigation mode between items from traversal to forward only. I selected them to be forward only, so all the questions in this section will be uh, viewed only forward, so the student can't go back to any uh, question after answering it. I can even set an item. Uh, uh, sorry, I can even uh, set a time to this uh, section. So for example, five minutes, after the five minutes, the system will uh, uh, will uh, take the students automatically to the next section, okay? So I can change, or if I want to add instructions for the test, so the student can read these instructions before taking the test and even adding instructions to each section. So I can click save. So I think we still have some time for uh, for uh, creating the automatic test to throw it. Yes, I think, yes, we can do. Okay. At least uh, yeah, if you are not able to do all of them, we can just uh, have a look on the okay. blueprint. And, uh, okay, the blueprint, okay. So you so, have like 
Okay. So the other method, the other method to create uh, an, a test is, is the automatic uh, method. How can we do it? First, we have to know how to create a blueprint, which is a table of specification or the criteria of the uh, test. So if I went to blueprints, let's, let's go to another test that I have more than blueprints here. I will change the test as a bank, sorry, the bank from here. I will go to this bank and select it. In this bank, as you can see, I have already uh, six blueprints. I have used, even if I want to you, you see the usage of this blueprint, I used it five times to create and generate forms. Uh, this blueprint is not completed yet. I still uh, working on processing on it, or it's still in progress. So what if I want to create a new blueprint? I can click on create blueprint. I will just uh, want to add a name and the number of points for these blueprints. So let's just loading. Okay, I will call it final test blueprint. Sorry. Okay, I will add the points. For example, I will add them, I will create them 100. So this criteria or this blueprint will be used to generate tests for me that have 100 points. I can click on save or click on save and edit to start editing and working on this criteria. I will click on save and edit. Okay, now I will go uh, inside this criteria or this blueprint I created. And I will start adding blocks. What are the blocks? Let's say that they are the sections. If I want to have uh, a test that have more than one section, like we did before, we had a writing and reading sections, I can create a block for a writing and a block for reading. But I can also use blocks in one section. For example, I have in one section two type of uh, or two different criteria. I want to have two different criteria in the same section. So I can create two blocks or more to assign them to the same uh, criteria or, or sorry to the same uh, section so let's start creating blocks here i can click on create new block and i will see that i have three different type of blocks let's go directly to them i will select the first one and we will see all the three of them this create list so first of all i have to call or uh, name my block i will call it reading Okay, and I will have to select or give it a, a weight. So it will take 50% of the uh, total criteria of blueprint, which means 50 points because my blueprint has 100 points. Okay, I have here four different levels to uh, create or manage my criteria or sorry, block. First categories and item types, cognitive levels and difficult. I will start with okay, categories. I will add category. Adding a category means, or a categories, means that I have to select the weight of each uh, category that will be represented in this block. So let's see how I will do it. So now I have a list of my categories. Even if I opened it, I will have all the levels. So for example, I want it to be on chapter levels. I will see, I will say that I want 50% of the test to be from chapter one. 10% from chapter two and 40% from chapter three. Okay, and I will click save. So now it added the level of categories. Now I can add the level of item types. What, or which item types I want to add in my uh, block. I will select that I want 70% from uh, the uh, block will be from MCQ that have one question. I can see here that I have two or MCQ two times, why? Because I have two types or two different uh, items of MCQ and they have two different scores. I have some MCQs that have one point and some MCQ questions that have two points. So I want 70% from question MCQ that have one point. I want 10% from true and false. And for example, essay with rich text, I want the rest, which is 20%, I will click save. Okay, now I can go to the next 
level, which is cognitive. By the way, the first two levels are required. I, I have to select and insert the percentage of each chapter and the item types I want. So which chapters and which item types I want, I have to add them. Cognitive and difficulty are optional. I can just turn it on if I want to add the level of uh, cognitive levels. And I will click on add categories, or oh, sorry, add cognitive levels. Adding cognitive is the same as before. I will have a list of cognitives that I have on the bank, and I will be able to add uh, the percentage of each uh, uh, cognitive. So I want remembering to represent to be represented in the uh, test or this block with 20%, understanding with 80%. The same as in difficult, so I will just keep it off and will click on save and validate. Save and validate will validate that I have completed uh, all the levels I, uh, I have in this block. As you can see, I have configured 100% of this block. For example, if I deleted this, I will see that the progress of this uh, uh, validation is not completed. So I have to make sure that I completed and each level have 100% as you can see here. So this one has only 80% because I didn't finish it. So I will add it again and I will add the 20%. Okay, now I can click on save and validate. Save the block and validate it. So I will add a new block. Let's go to ILO matrix or learning outcome matrix. I will click on ILO matrix. I will set the percentage to be the C let's say 40 percent okay it's 40 percent which is 40 uh, points now i have a uh, chapter one chapter two and chapter c which chapter i want to include in my uh, block criteria i will select all the three chapters i will go to item types the same which item types i want to be uh, represented in this block criteria i will select question mcq which with one point, uh, true, false, true or false, which have one point, and the AC with plain tickets, which has three points, and I will click save. Okay, now I have to go to the first uh, or the most important tab here in this uh, block criteria. I will go to ILO matrix. In ILO matrix, I have to create or fill this matrix. Let's See, in the first level, I have here the level of chapters or categories of my bank. Here I have the level of uh, learning outcomes. And finally, I have the level of item types. Let's see how I will fill it. So uh, how many, uh, uh, what is the weight or the points I want uh, to be represented from each chapter? So for example, I, will, I have 40, let's remember that I have 40 points on this block, I want 20 of them to be from chapter one, 10 of them to be from chapter two, and 10 from chapter three. Now I have completed the 40 points, as I can see. So if I have different or less than 40 points, I will be able to view it here and make sure that I didn't complete it, and then I can complete it later. So I will go to level two, the next level, which is the learning outcomes level. Now, in chapter one, the system knows that I have these three uh, learning outcomes. In chapter two, I have those two learning outcomes and three, the same, I have two those uh, learning outcomes. So I have to say or uh, set the number of points I want to be from uh, this uh, learning outcome to be represented in the uh, block. So I have here 20 points. I want five points to be from this learning outcome and 10 points from this learning outcome and another five points from this one. In this uh, chapter, I want all the 10 points to be represented by the first learning outcome. The same I want in the, uh, the chapter number three, I want all the 10 points to be in this learning outcome. Let's go to the third level. I know it's, it, it, it may uh, uh, seem a little bit hard, but uh, we, we, we just do it one time. We create our uh, ILO matrix or uh, our blueprint only one time, and we can use it multiple times to create different forms from our banks. So I will go now to the third level, which is item types. 
I have here, I selected three type of items. SC with plain text, which has three points and MCQ and true and false. Uh, how can I, how do I want to distribute those five points on this first uh, uh, ILO? I want two points here. I will say two points here and go to the next. Now I have this error message. Why? Because I, I asked the system to uh, find uh, a question or two points on a question that have already three points. It can, I can't, I can't create a question or find a question or two points on this question because it already has three points. So I can add three or six or nine or multiple uh, of three, okay? Now I have three points from this question and I can add two points or two points of yes on MCQ. So now it will get one question or one AC question that have three points and two questions of MCQ because it has one point. What about those 10 points? I can distribute them. So I will say, for example, six on uh, AC with plain text. So it will get two questions, AC, that have three points. And let's say uh, three points here and one point. Okay, I will go to the third one. I am do the same. So, so let's say that I want to see here. I'll just distribute the uh, items points. Let's say one here, right? And let's, okay. As you can see now, I have completed my uh, ILO matrix. Now I have 40 points, which represents 100% of the block. I can go to uh, the difficulty level and add difficulties if I want, or I just can keep it off and save my uh, block. So it's just loading because I, it's the first time to open it. Okay, I can add the, the, the uh, difficulty levels percentage. So I want 80% easy and 10% medium and 10% hard. Okay, now I can save and validate my block. Still have only 10 points that I haven't created or added to a block. So I will create a new block. This time I will select scenario set. In scenario set block, I want to create or the system to find the criteria which has a, a reading scenario or video or even audio and link it with specific items. So I can select the type of this passage from here. For example, I will select reading scenario. I can uh, select specific content area uh, that will be linked to this reading scenario. So only reading scenarios that are linked to liquids will be uh, here in my criteria, or I can just keep it empty. Also, I can select specific keywords that should be uh, assigned or added to this uh, passage to be uh, uh, added to the test, or I can just leave it empty. The most important tab is items. I have to go and select the items I want. As you can see, I still have zero items of points and the block points are there. I will click add item. So first I should select the, uh, uh, the type of item I want to add MCQ. MCQ that has what point one or two or three, I will say one. And I want five items of this type. So five items that has one point and what is the objective or outcome that are uh, that is linked to these items? I will select the first one and click save. Okay, now the, uh, this criteria will get me five items uh, linked to this passage. And those five items have, each one of them have one point and they are linked to the same objective, which is this one, student understands the movement of it. I can uh, still add more items, I will say, Let's say true or false, that has only uh, also one point and I will add two of them with another uh, objectives okay, and click save. Now I have seven points from those items. I have only three points to add. I will add again. I will say the same item type MCQ and also have one point. I want three of them, but I will select or a, a, a new, a, a, I would come or objective and click save. Now, this block criteria 
will get me a passage, a reading scenario passage that have 10 items linked to it. Uh, five of them, five of them are linked to this uh, uh, outcome. Two of them, true or false question, and linked to this uh, outcome. And three of them, MCQ also, but linked to another outcome. I can click save and validate. Sorry, I didn't select or I selected the same uh, name of uh, my blog, so I would call it blog. Let's call it writing yeah, and save and read it. Now I have three blocks. I completed all the points of the criteria. 100% is completed, so I don't have add new block uh, button. So now I can click save criteria and publish it. Publishing the criteria will allow me to use it in creating automatic test. Let's go quickly to create automatic test. It will take only a few uh, seconds. I will go back to Test Explorer, click on Create Test. Now I will select the method of creating automatic test. I will select all uh, online test or CBT, and it will be automatic. I'll go to Next. I will have here the list of criteria because I selected to create automatic test. I will select this one, final criteria. It tells me that I have 10 points uh, in this test, in this test criteria. So I will know that I will create a test that have 10 points. I can select the number of forms I want. So if I want more than one form, it will give me two or three or four as I want, different forms that have uh, different items. Or I can select the common items. For example, if I added five, so it will create a, a fixed five items in all the forms. And the other form, uh, the other items will be changed. But I will select to be zero. So it will give me two different uh, forms. I will click next using this criteria. Okay, I will click next. In this step, I can create the sections as I did before. I can add section, call it read, uh, reading. And for example, I will add reading. And I can assign all the blocks I have or more than one block to this section. So for example, let's drag it just like this. I added two uh, blocks to the same sections as I said before, or I do the following. Just remove all of this. I'll just click on auto map. Auto map, what we will do, it will just assign each block under each section. So I will just click auto map. It will create two sections. I can edit the name of those sections. So Will be reading, and this one will be writing. Okay. So now each section of those have a block under it. Okay, this is a reading uh, block and reading section, and this is writing. I will click next. Now I have the same summary I got before. If I clicked on save and generate, the system will start searching in my bank uh, for uh, the items using the criteria added to the blocks of this blueprint. As you can see, it generated the test already with two different forms. I have here two sections, reading and writing. In each section, I have already the items I wanted from my criteria. As you can see, in form number two also, I have the same two sections and items created and generated in each section. So this was how to create uh, automatic test and manual test. So, Dr. Walid. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, you are more than welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, thank you for all the participants because I know it's it's hard to uh, follow all these uh, details. But oh, yes. as we mentioned uh, at the beginning, it's uh, the, the objective of this workshop actually is to give you an overview. So now you are aware about what does it mean a course, how you can, what do you, what does it mean, how managing a course, creating an assessment plan in the system, uh, have a, creating an item bank, creating items, creating a blueprint, uh, generating test forms manually or automatically. So the main purpose, I think now you go through all uh, the process uh, which we uh, promised at the beginning that we are going to handle. That doesn't mean at all that you are now ready to use it and, and uh, uh, by yourself. This means that you are have now an overview and then you can move uh, 
to the next phase, uh, of course, after the tomorrow's uh, session as well, to the face-to-face -face training to uh, and hands-on. So we'll be able to uh, implement what you have already uh, and practice what you already have seen. Uh, however, uh, you're still, you can actually uh, start using the platform. You can just log in, you can start trying uh, playing with the platform, playing especially with the item bank, we'll try to write items. Uh, uh, many of the things actually, it's, it, it has a very user-friendly interface, so you can do it. You can access the, the channel and try to see some of the videos. So you will be able, this will make you more familiar with a lot of uh, the features as well. So uh, I think now we can, uh, we only have five minutes. I think we, we can take uh, questions. Let me check what questions you wrote already on the chat. Okay. Uh, okay. Yes, you can, as you've seen, you can actually select the learning objective and the, even the cognitive level for each question uh, by a drop menu. You can just define the objectives and define the cognitive levels of the item bank, and then you can select it. What else? How can I match questions with specific course learning outcomes? Uh, uh, you, you can just upload the uh, learning outcomes uh, to the, the item bank, and then you can uh, match the, each question with the objectives. And later, we will show you, uh, maybe later, uh, also another way to match and the report. It is also actually in the reporting uh, part. Uh, I think the attendance link actually has been sent. Please uh, record, uh, record your attendance and also answer the, some questions uh, on the, the form. Questions with a global uh, on uh, especially with students, iPads and tablets. Okay. Uh, I'm not aware how the students actually are you logging in through the the, the university uh, platform, but it's simply, uh, let me explain what's the login, how, how it happens. When we open, uh, when you click on the key, the students actually will be directed to the King Khaled uh, single sign on platform. So there they handle it. And then after they uh, verify the username and password, they just pass for us, uh, forward the, the students to the, pla the platform where, with, uh, with a validated authentication. So it's, it's from their side, it's from King Khaled side. And if the students are able to log into Blackboard and other uh, services on the university, by default, they will be able to uh, log into uh, our platform. Uh, and I think it has been already tested. However, and we can ask engineer Abdrabu uh, uh, if it will be good also to test during the face-to-face -face training. Uh, and thank you. If you have any uh, questions, please write in the chat. Uh, and sorry for taking uh, too much time from you. All the details. I know it's hard. Uh, but uh, we, yeah, our strategy in the training, we found it's, it's good that you have an overall view, then you go to hands on. Uh, uh, this will help you be uh, focused uh, on the details when you move to the second phase. And thank you very much. Huh? Yes, the uh, recorded, uh, thank you, Dr. Ayub. Uh, thank you very much. The recorded session, uh, session will be recorded mm -hmm. and will be shared with you on the WhatsApp. Inshallah, Engineer Abrab will do. Uh, yes, I know it's it's hard to concentrate. I know that's why. Uh, and I, I I mentioned you are not required in this session to concentrate on all the details. But you, what we need from you to have an overview. Uh, and anyway, you will have the recording, and you can go back and check. You have the short videos for each step. You already see today. You already saw today, so you can check on the the channel as well. See you inshallah tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll have two sessions, uh, sorry, one session, one session for uh, uh, computer-based, uh, paper-based tests, and also how to run a paper-based and how to run computer-based session. And then by this, you will be able to have an idea about the whole uh, usage of the platform, and then you can move forward to the face-to-face -face, inshallah. Thank you very much. Uh, and have a uh, good night.
thank you, Dr. Walid. Thank you, you uh, all for attending the lecture. Inshallah, attendance and workshop will be coordinated after uh, the online workshop uh, are completed. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, please, in the chat, uh, a link has been sent uh, to the preparation and the question. Please fill it out, please. Thank you. Thank you for all.